All right, everybody. Today's project is brought to you by Maverick. Um, the lady that purchased this bowl took it home, and about an hour later, he grabbed it off the coffee table and went running through the house with it, thinking it was a new chew toy. So we're going to see if we can't repair it. As you can see, he, uh, he did a number on it. Um, that had to have been a heck of a thing to watch. All right. We're going to start off with uh, hot gluing a uh, glue block on it. Um, I'm trying the Jim Sprague method with Sprague wood turning. He puts the hot glue in a uh, an electric frying pan um, and just cranks it up. This is a super cheap one I picked up. Uh, it, you know, scary cheap. But anyway, uh, you just dip your glue block in the hot glue. It ensures that it's all nice and hot and uniform temperature which i think is key to the success of this project and stick it on the piece um luckily i had the ring in the piece you know centered in the piece that i made the decorative ring so i was able to use that to help line up my glue block and then just press it on nice and tight um you'll see here in a little bit i'm very proud of how uh how well i did balancing this thing but it's a phenomenal method. Um, I won't go back to using the hot glue gun for gluing glue blocks on. I'm only going to use this frying pan method. Um, let's say it just it was fantastic. I'm using the cheapest hot glue from Harbor Freight that I could find. Uh, it didn't matter what kind of sticks they were in. They just throw them in there and let it melt. Uh, it doesn't take very long to heat up or anything like that. About the same as a regular hot glue gun would. Uh, it's a fantastic method. Let it sit for a couple hours so it get really good and hard. And we go for it. Now I'm going to use my uh, 5A sweat pack bowl gouge. Um, very fresh, very uh, freshly sharpened up, clean. And look how well centered that is. I, mean, I, 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 yeah. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again. Get one that close to the center on a glue block. All right, we're just going to go through very light, easy cuts. We're going to work our way up it, get it back to true. These wings up here at the top where I, I couldn't see them. I was going by feel. I would touch with the heel of the gouge and then bring the cutting edge in. Because I just couldn't see what I was doing. Same thing with the inside when I flip it around here. You'll see I had a uh, stepped away and then I had to like set it there and just slowly go at it. Um, I'll give you a real time view right here of how fast I was actually going while I was uh, cutting this. Slow light passes. The thinner this thing gets the more those wings flex and the more trouble I'm going to have. I'm just doing a series of uh, really light pull cuts up in here. It's about the only way I could do it. I couldn't get in there to feel the bevel on. It was just bouncing too much. And I, the goal was to take as little off as possible, but still remove any of the marks. All right, I'm checking my work right here, and... I can feel these wings flexing. Um, I noticed I didn't get the full cut, but when I went and wiggled the wings here, I can actually see them flex. So I know I can't go any farther. There's, there's, I'll never get a cut, you know, all the way through it. So we're just gonna have to sand it. Um, a lot of time sanding. I probably got a couple hours in the sanding on this thing just to try to get it right. Because again, with all the wings and unevenness, I couldn't really spin too much. I'm going to go from 60 all the way up to 600, and then I'm going to do some hand sanding as well. Um, the name of the game on this was sanding. Just taking my time. Go slow. Um, I'm I did a little bit of while it was churning, but the majority of it was actually done with the lathe off. Um, when you get on the inside, those bumps and stuff kept ripping the paper and the pads off. They get sucked up in the dust collector. Then I got to dig them out of the dust collector, and yeah... It was fun. All right, now I'm going to use my Sandoflex 
uh, 120 grit on the rim of the bowl. And again, I'm just going to take my time and go a little bit at a time. Um, I didn't show all of it because I, I worked on this for a little while. And then, of course, the hand sanding. I didn't show all of it either. I just showed a little bit. But with the grain, work my way around it. Time for finish. Watco Danish oil. Same thing it had. Um, I put three coats on, actually. Brush it on. Wait 15 minutes. Wipe it. Then, you know, brush it on again. Wait 15 minutes, wipe it, and then I came back out in the evening and did the whole process one more time just to make sure it was right. Alright, we're going to remove the uh, bowl from the glue box. I just went around it with a uh, putty knife and worked at it. Um, because this had finish on it, I wasn't too concerned about it ripping any of the wood off of the piece. Um, I had a feeling it would pop off. Just like that. And as you can see, it left just a little bit of residue. Let me move the camera here. Here we go. There we go. All right. Left just a little bit of glue residue. Left everything intact. Um, really happy with the outcome of that part of it. Uh, wasn't easy to do to make sure it was right. And you can see, if I wanted to do an ink stamping of my logo, well, <laughs> There's one right there in my hot glue. Alright, back to more sanding. Um, little trick for dissolving hot glue. Your accelerator you use for your CA glue, if you squirt a little bit on there and wipe it, it'll dissolve uh, hot glue. So any residue or anything like that. Um, next I just a little squirt, wipe, and that's it. And of course more Danish oil on it. All right, now for the fun part. Let's get to try out my new laser. Um, this is a cool thing. Laser Pecker 2 Laser Engraver. Uh, you hit Preview on it, and it'll give you a little box that'll show you where your uh, print area is. So you know you're going to print inside that box. I adjust the piece, get it set up. Um, and then all i got to do is hit Print. It'll give me a couple of beeps, and it'll start printing. I kept this in uh, real time. I didn't speed anything up here. This is how fast it actually goes. It's pretty impressive. One thing that really gets me with this thing is how uh, detailed you can get and how small you can get. I did 8 millimeter high letters. Alright, here it is. Colleen, I hope you're happy with the repair. Um, does it stay during the video? <laughs> Maverick thought it was a chew toy. But... Like I say, you can barely see any of the marks. The only two I couldn't get out are these two. And I can't even find the rest of them. There were some others. Ah, there's one right there. But I was able to save it. You know, just made it a little bit thinner, and it's a little bit more see-through, but that'll just look better with the candles. I actually think it looks better this way. I can say that one mark you can barely see, but there it is. We managed to save it. Like I said, the logo is burned on. That's the logo that was originally burned on it. And then uh, I used my uh, Laser Pecker 2 laser engraver to do the little ink collaboration with Maverick. Just because there's a good story, so you got to have that on there. Anyway, I hope you like it. Um, yeah, just a fun little video this week. Please like, subscribe, share, the whole nine yards. 
we're still trying to get to a thousand. I, I, that's my goal. I want to be at a thousand by the end of the year. Hopefully I can pull that off. I don't know. We'll see. Thank you very much.